Hey guys, so sorry for the late start. Um, I had some technical difficulties this morning, but everything is working. Nice to see you and nice to be with you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and praise you for what you're about to do, the lives you're about to touch, the people you are about to heal, the generational curses you are about to break, the generational rational blessings that you're about to bring. Um, let me today be an oracle of you. Let me only say what you would have me say. Lord God, I praise you in the name of Jesus. Speak to me and speak through me through this sermon. Amen. Hi guys. I, I was thinking about this week's sermon. And I was thinking about uh, something that I get done every week. And um, not every week, but every month. Every month. Um, I get personal care items delivered for me um, every month. And when the personal care items come, uh, the, the guy... Um, who's been delivering for me for years, um, I order the supplies, the personal care supplies, and the, the company said, we'll call you uh, when it's delivered. So they call me, and then the next day after they call me, uh, when the supplies are ready to be delivered, the guy, the guy um, knocks on the door. When I say knock, he like literally bangs on my door and then drops these boxes off. And then what happens is he leaves them there. His job is done. And the ladies that work with me they put them on, they pack them away. I have a little storage closet, and they pack them away on the shelf. And um, then after they pack them away, they, they dismantle the boxes, and then throw the boxes out. Um, until the next delivery. Um, they take them to the, to the recycling and, and the recycling people do whatever they, they will with those boxes. Um, so I was thinking of something I get, uh, that is something I get done every month. So I, I get new personal supp supplies every month and this is the system that I've been doing for about 15, 15 years not the same system the system has changed over the years because lifestyles change whatever needs change especially uh, when you have a disability and life changes um, um, pr pretty quickly at some point, sometimes it stays the same. But I was thinking about those empty boxes and um, how how when the delivery comes, um, the girls that um, work with me they pack them away on the shelf in my storage closet and then they take those empty boxes away. And I was thinking of the term that they always say, take, uh, they say, um, think outside of the box. And I was thinking of those empty boxes after the things are delivered, my personal things are delivered that the girls take the box. They break the boxes down because in my building there's a policy that you have to break the boxes down. You can't even take the whole box 
downstairs. First of all, you need to break it down and then you take it to the uh, uh, recycling. And I was saying um, about that term, think outside of the box, I was saying um, for human for human life or human circumstance, I was saying, what box? We've created this idea of a box. The box is man-made. God never said anything about putting things in a box. He did say about doing things decent in decency and in order. But we we have created boxes in our own mind. And he's like, there is no box to what you can do. If I put it in you, I will decide a way to get it done. He's saying, you've been putting mental boxes on your life, on yourself, on what you can do for years. And he wants me to tell you, take the box away. Throw it out. He said, break it down. Because sometimes with, with uh, boxes, we tend to keep them whole and throw them out. And then when, we, when things get tough, or when we want to bring those mental boxes back, we just re retrieve them from the recycling bin. He's like, you need to break down your mental boxes, just like the ladies do every month for my personal supplies, just like they have to break down those physical boxes that my personal supplies come in. You have got to break break down your mental boxes and then you can throw them out. He's like, unlike the ladies that uh, um, break stuff down and pack them away, he said, I need you to throw them out. He's like, I need you to not take them to your mental recycling bin so you could take them out whenever you want to look at your, neg your negativity, whatever. We, we recycle things. We don't throw it out because uh, usually we like to keep on to things for uh, a, a safety blanket. But he's like, with me, you don't need a safety blanket. You need to throw those mental boxes or mental limitations away. He's like, you don't need to think outside of the box. You need to realize that those boxes are, are man-made and you need to throw out the boxes. You don't need to recycle them. So, so, recycle them so you can uh, take them out if if things don't work out. I'll just go back to being a sourpuss. Or if things don't work out, I'll just go back to this. Or if I can't quit smoking because it's too hard, I'll just buy cigarettes again. Uh, he said um, that that you need to destroy your boxes. Take the limits off of God and take the limits off of yourself. A lot of people uh, think that God has no limits. We know that God can do anything. But the problem is we put limits on ourselves. And that's the problem. And um, I'm not saying that everybody can do everything, but I'm saying that everybody can do something. And usually the limits we put on ourselves 
are self-made limits. Like, they're not, um, I'm not saying that every, like, what is comedy saying? You can do anything that, um, you can do anything that you want to do. But no, you can get, I would love to go to the moon one day, but I don't have the ability to go to the moon because I physically can't go to the moon unless, unless, um, I was into, uh, space engineering and wanted to invent a wheelchair that could sit, sit on the moon. Um, but for now, I don't want to go to the moon, so it doesn't matter to me, but someone with CP someday might want to go to the moon, and they might have the knowledge, the know-how to get that, to partner with the right people, and to make a chair, a chair or walker to go on the moon. I believe that God not only puts the gifts, but puts the mental resources, physical resources, um, in, in our heart, he gives us what we should desire, and then when he gives us what we should desire, that desire germinates into something beautiful. And I think the problem is we spend too much time looking at what we see around us, and the Lord saying, uh, get rid of the mental boxes. I, I gave you something to do, but because of what you don't see, you don't think you could do it. Or because you're this type of person, and you don't see that type of person uh, doing what you want to do, you're like, it's impossible. But I'm speaking to the trailblazers today who are seeing something that they've never seen before, and I'm saying, if God put it in your heart, you can do it. If God put it in, in your mind to do, he will give you the, the ability to do it. All he needs is your yes, and it will take work on your part and to, to uh, work with God to collaborate with God to get it done. There are some trailblazers and, and your sleep is being also interrupted. Everything is being interrupted and the, there are some dreams that you keep on coming back. You keep on trying to ignore, but they keep on coming back. It died. There is something that that I created, I created about 17 years ago, and then there are times where that thing dies down and I, I move on to trying something else. But that thing keeps on coming back, and I'm like, Lord, how is this thing going to be done? And he said, just keep on doing what you're doing. And lately, that thing is is totally in me again. I'm like, I'm hearing a, it having to do with a famous band, a very famous band. If I said the name, you would know. And I'm like, how is this supposed to be done? There's there's me. I live in Toronto. And there's them. They're, the, they're one of the most famous bands in the world. But that, that thing is, has been in me for 17 years. And I'm believing now that God will make it happen. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know why. But I can feel it's coming. And there's one... There's a couple people who are like me, where the dream lays dormant for a minute, and then it pops up again, 
and then it goes back dormant and then it pops up again and then it goes back dormant and then it pops up again the Lord says just keep going just keep doing what you're doing just keep working just keep striving and he will get it done so he can get the glory from it um it's just and th this is there are some dreams where you think are dead but they're not they're not they're just dormant and in development and in de it's like the sermon i did years ago called the dark room where i talked about a camera um when you take pictures um you have to um you used to have to with digital you don't have to do this anymore the picture uh appears right away but with analog or whatever they call the old school camera film you have to put it in a dark room so that it can germinate and the picture can show so in some of your lives the picture's already there but it's just in development you're on the, you're at the dark room stage and he's saying just to wait and be patient until development and sometimes uh, people think why is this taking so long a delay is not denial it's development i'll say that delay is not denial it's development so the reason why it's been delayed is because he's developing you and what he's using to develop you the skills he's using to develop may not seem to be related but they are just keep on going keep on living don't give up and you know why that why that thing keeps on keeps on popping up because it's from god and what is from god may not seem from god because this this thing that i'm dreaming about that i've had in my heart for 17 years this story uh this band and their music that i've had in my heart for 17 years in my mind for 17 years they're not a christian band it's it's not even christian music but it's something that a story with music that the lord has has put in my heart 17 years ago when I was in school, the Lord downloaded this story with all the songs and all that stuff. And I know one day it will come to pass. Because it keeps on, when it lays dormant, it pops up again. When it lays dormant, it pops up again. It's like it won't leave me alone. And no matter what other projects I, I try, I keep on coming back to this one. So maybe I'll start another project. That one will take off and it'll lead me to this one that I've had in my heart for 17 years. Um, there's there's um, people that that think they're too old to do what God has called them to do. But age doesn't mean you're done. Age means uh, you've got wisdom, you've got knowledge that, that other younger people in that field don't have. You're not too old. You were just developing wisdom. And because you tried it when you were younger, but when you were younger, you wouldn't have been wise enough. You wouldn't have had the maturity or the tools 
to handle whatever. But now he's saying to to the hoary head, to the older person, do it again. He's saying do it again this time because you have the wisdom and the knowledge of what to do. And sometimes when something doesn't work, um, you need to step back and learn and grow. And for some of you, the Lord is telling you, you need to learn and you need to grow. And when you're talking about learning, you're talking about growth, uh, that, that will uh, lead to your success. Because sometimes when you get something too soon, uh, and you don't have the maturity to learn and grow, you can lose it because you don't know how to keep it. So, it's not that God is keeping something from you. He's saying, you need to take time to learn, and you need to take time to grow. And that's what he is... And that's what he is saying now. He's saying delay is not denial. It's development. Like I said before, he keeps on saying that, so I'll keep repeating it. Delay is not denial. It's development. Delay is not denial. It's development. And some of you right now are in the dark room phases of your life and wondering why this is taking so long to get to get going. Because, and the Lord wants me to tell you it's because he's developing it. And it's nothing to do with um, uh, he didn't give it to you, he didn't He's not providing for you. He is, but he's working some things out. He said something to me the other day. He said, uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Because in time, he said, you don't know who's watching you. You don't know who's watching your videos. You don't know who's watching your life. You think you know, but you don't have any idea. And you have no idea what I'm working out on your behalf. On your behalf. And I'm saying that to you. The Lord is working something out in on your behalf. In, in the dark room behind the scenes. And he's saying, just be patient. Don't give up. He's saying... When he gives you other things to add to your vision, write them down. There are there are people under the side of my voice who are who want to develop a program, who want to develop buildings for the homeless, who want to uh, develop different programs for young people, and God is giving you ideas. And pretty soon, he will connect you to the right people to get that done. And when he's giving you um, um, a snap of the vision, he's saying, write it down, codify it, date it. And he will bring it to pass. So guys, thank you for being with me today. I really appreciate it. Bye. Soon I'll and I'll turn in your favor and turn it around for you. It won't always be like
this. The Lord will perfect that concerning you. Oh, sooner or later, it'll turn in your favor. It's turning around for you, around for you, around for you, around for you. It's turning around for you, around for you. Around for you, around for you, it's turning around for you. Bye guys, I'll see you next week.